are equally people presently involved in the revival, resuscitation, and the restoration of the defunct Republic of Biafra are equally people still involved, you know, pushing for the restoration. They're coming back. They're bringing back of the Republic of Biafra or not. You know, many people, especially uh, people from the southeastern Nigeria, the present southeastern Nigeria geopolitical zone, are still conversing for the restoration of Biafra. They are prominently, you know, prominently at the vanguard for the restoration of Biafra. They want the nation of Biafra to come back. You know, they believe that they had a country called Biafra. You know, when when it became extinguished after the war, now the people from that zone now seriously want it back. They want to have a nation of their own, you know, to identify who the Igbo people are as Biafra Republic or a nation called Biafra. You know, some of them, whether educated or not, still believe that there was a country called Biafra before. The late Professor Chino Achebe, you know, is one prominent Igbo person who believed that the aspiration of a people to free themselves or themselves, you know, uh, was smashed and truncated by that civil war. So, and in his book, one of his books, the titled one, There Was a Country. I think that was the last book he wrote before he died. There was a country. You know, Biafra, of course, existed as a country. Unofficially, it existed as a country because it had the features of a government, of a country. The parliament was there, the central government was there, you know, the provinces were all there. But you see, it was not officially recognized by world bodies like the United Nations, you know, the European Union, the Organization of African Unity at the time. The, you know, so many of those bodies did not recognize Biafra because it was not constituted, you know, legitimately, so to say, in the eyes of those international uh, organizations. But some of them believed that uh, there was a country and that country should come back. Of course, it has not formed as an ideology of the people. It is now in the minds of almost every Igbo person to have that country called Biafra, you know, to be restored. And I quite agree that not all Igbo people also, not every Igbo person buys into that idea of bringing back Biafra. You know, uh, Igbo people complain of marginalization in the political setup called Nigeria. They feel that they are marginalized by the rest of Nigeria, especially the other big ways like them are marginalizing them in the polity called Nigeria. Well, whether they are marginalized or not, I am not in the position to make a judgment about it. My concern is that equally people in their unanimity, you know, have distance, you know, distance themselves from the agitation 
to bring back the Republic of Biafra. But they are not against the people who want it. Predominantly, Igbo people who aspire to have that country to come back. They are not against it at all, at all. But they do not want to be involved. Principally because, you know, in the past, they saw Biafra as an Egypt to them. They saw Biafra as a land, you know, that posed challenges to them. They saw the default Eastern region as an Egypt. So when they freely walked away by the grace of God, by the handiwork of God, they would not want to be part of it, you know, again, or to see it restored in the way that it will involve them. That is their position. That is their position. You know, uh, as a scholar who has taken time to look at the different segments and fronts in Nigeria, if you see for my opposition, my uh, opinion, whether Nigeria is going to be downsized, to be fragmented, you know, to be dismembered in order to achieve effective political administration. I will subscribe to that. There is nothing bad in that if Nigeria now becomes, you know, uh, uh, regionalized or dismembered in a way that we have now different political units or components in order for it to be administered very, very well. There is nothing bad. Because if you look at it, there, is so many, there are so many things that are wrong in this country called Nigeria. So many things have gone wrong and they are still going wrong. Of course, the things that are going wrong are not caused by just one ethnic group in Nigeria. Almost every ethnic group in Nigeria, you know, is guilty of what is really happening in Nigeria. The first republic we had in Nigeria, led by Saata Fawabelewa, you know, was overthrown because of allegations and accusations of so many evils in the system. Corruption was very, very rife, very, very serious. Nepotism, you know, ethnic, you know, polarization of the, of the country was in the minds of almost everybody. People want to, wanted to lock over other people. So many challenges confronted Nigeria at that time. And those young soldiers struck and overthrew that government. From 1960 to today, power has never been constant. Police is still carrying out their brutality upon the citizens of this country. Police are fighting with soldiers. Where do you see that happen? In a civilized country where police officers will be fighting with soldiers. Military officers. Military officers fighting, against, fighting the police. Where do you see these things happen? Corruption is still rising every day by the day. The postism is still there. Religious and political tensions are still mounting high and high. Fakery, counterfeiting, you know, of currency and drugs, you know, commodities in the market is a problem. All the creams we have, all the drinks that are imported, people have all filled them. It is a problem. It is a very, very serious problem. You might look at them as minor one, minor, minor ones, concentrating on the government, on the government, federal and state governments. These things are also serious problems in the country. Nothing is working. The politicians are using the people's money to do anyhow they like, and nobody's asking them questions. The education system or the educational system is falling below standards. Morals are dying. Our native ethos are not being you know preserved and obeyed anymore. People say they are nothing because of 
the influence of westernization and they say it doesn't matter so many things are not being controlled are very very wrong so if you see from my own personal opinion i will subscribe to the fact that nigeria should be dismembered nigeria should be split into smaller political units for effective administration you know people look at it that because of the size of nigeria that a black person with his low mentality with his low psyche cannot adequately administer over the affairs of nigeria and if you look at it it is of course obvious because since 1960 to today nothing is working nothing is really working nothing is working the country is coming down and down and down and people are resorting to self-help you know you know to to see for how to help themselves security is dying everything is really, really becoming very very bad and some people look at it and say they want their own republic like they do the what people are seeking for the niger that people are seeking for the people who call themselves their friends are also saying split nigeria into pieces let us see whether if nigeria becomes smaller in size you know split into smaller political units whether the people that will now elect and appoint to manage them can do better can do better so they are now asking for the restoration of the republic of Biafra. if it is for these reasons i will agree and i will i will even support but what i and my people equally people will never support is any agitation any movement any initiation that is being floated just for ethnic sentiment because of ethnic grounds because of grounds on branch ire anger against another ethnic group you think that other people are not are the people doing bad your own people are not doing bad that is not that is not a good thing that is the one i will not support and i will also encourage my people not to support for those who support the restoration of biafra as i have said earlier it's not there's nothing bad in it there's nothing bad in it but if the default eastern region was like an egypt to them and by the grace of god they walked out freely they would not want to come back again to be in the state they were before of course they complain of so many irregularities incongruities that took place during the time of biafra as a country and during the time of regional government the people who were called the minorities in the east suffered heavily suffered heavily you know so when freedom beckoned you know to them to come you know when it was given by god providence god's providence brought it you know about and when it came the people became free and they are happy with it so they do not want to go back to egypt where they were almost enslaved segregated upon dominated marginalized even in their own land of course that was natural you look at smaller ethnic groups you know margin with the bigger ethnic groups of course nobody will guarantee healthy competition in that midst you know in that relationship nobody can guarantee appropriate security in every segment there were so many things that took place during the time of the different eastern region and that of Biafra. so if you now want to regionalize nigeria again 
and they want to bring in the people of Igwe and some other minorities in the east, in the different east, to come back and join, you know, another eastern region. Many of them will fight against it. They will hesitate to be part of it. Vehemently, they will not agree. They will fight it because they enjoy their freedom. According to Chief Sayyid Chida Hussein, during one on one discussion, he said it was an opportunity for them to be free <clears throat> and they fought very, very hard to achieve that freedom. It was costly. People like uh, the to Bazel, you know, from Dio, part of Ugole, they spent their lives. Okumule one of them, they fought the late E.A. Dialekor, official, they fought Emmanuel Origi, Obi-Wan, Elisha Amari, they fought for this freedom to come. And now that it, it, that it has come, they are enjoying it. So they would not want to go back to where they will begin to feel cheated again, dominated, marginalized, segregated upon. So that is why they say they do not want to be part of the new Biafra agitation. But they wish their brothers and sisters who aspire for it well, they wish them well. That is what they want. Whatever that will make them happy. As the minorities in the different eastern region had achieved their, their, their freedom, they are happy with it. So the people who want Biafra to be happy with it. And they are fighting hard for it anyway. They are fighting hard for it. You know, engaging the federal government, you know, in constitutional uh, debates, you know, fighting it out using other diplomatic, of course, and undiplomatic, you know, means to see if they can achieve and realize their, their dream of having the Republic of Biafra as their own. They are doing that. And there's nothing bad if a people feel cheated in a political system, in an organized society, if the people feel unsafe, their security is not guaranteed within the geography where they all belong. Politically, they have every reason you know, to look for a different space to operate. They have every constitutional right to do that. But of course, it must have to be diplomatic. You don't use, you know, uh, or heat up intention, use crime, you know, revolution, violence to go about it. But if you follow it constitutionally, legally, it might take time, of course, but it will be definitely realized. So when the people see and feel that they are not happy, within a particular given environment because of the injustices, you know, apparent in that system. They are free, of course, you know, to begin to look for a better place you know, to be part of. So the people who call themselves evil people are now fronting a different, you know, agitation. An agitation to realize a republic that will contain all of them, give them a unique identity as one people, and see if they can begin to use that particular system to launch themselves into limelight and into wherever they want to be. So there is nothing bad in such pursuits. Nothing. But as I said, it should not, you know, be done with violence, you know, with anger, looking at other people and hating them. No, 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 that is not the right thing to do. Use diplomacy, follow it legally, you know, involve the international community to be part of the negotiation and the contributions 
you know, to make it become realized. So, equally people, for now, say that they do not want to be part of the Biafra that will come back, which, you know, can absorb them and accommodate them in that, in that particular political setup. As well as so many other people, uh, when I met with the, uh, the former leader of uh, Mossop in Ogoni, led the meeting, one-on-one, joint one-on-one discussion, uh, he also told me that his people, you know, are not part of that agitation. Of course, uh, the Igbo is big enough, they have the human number, they have the resources, you know, at their beck and call, they have the exposure, you know, they have the contacts to realize what they want to realize without, you know, uh, asking for the help of the minorities. The minorities are too small and they have the fear that they cannot be matched again with, you know, a bigger ethnic group that can permanently subsume them and make them not have a voice.